Hello everyone, this is Jake from Down the Weeboo Hole, and today we're going to be doing something a little different. I can't believe this YouTube channel is almost three years old, and I haven't done an actual anime review. Jordan and I have done discussion videos, but never a full-on review. So I've decided maybe it's time to change that. For my first anime review, I've chosen the Spring 2020 Reverse Harm Isekai, My Next Life as a Villainess, All Roots Lead to Doom. I'm not the biggest Isekai fan, so I went into the series with tempered expectations, but I was pleasantly surprised at what I saw, and I have to admit that this is probably one of my favorite Isekai series, falling behind Konosuba and ReZero. Our story begins with future villainess Katharina Kleis as a child. The anime already scores a major point since just saying Katharina Kleis is so much fun. Katharina Kleis is the annoying and spoiled daughter of the noble Kleis family, but her personality soon changes when she trips and bumps her head. Memories of another life are displayed to her while she is knocked out, and when she awakens, she has become a totally different person. Katharina Kleis is now inhabited by a 17-year-old otaku girl who has been killed and now has been reincarnated into the body of Katharina Kleis, a fictional character from an Atome game called Fortune Lover. Atome is a genre of video game where the user plays as a female protagonist and their goal is to develop a romantic relationship with one of several male characters. There are several routes the player can take that will lead to good and bad endings. Katharina Kleis is the villainous in Fortune Lover and in almost every route of the video game she meets some awful outcome. So our Katharina Kleis, who has played Fortune Lover while in her own world, is terrified of what the future holds for her since she knows she is in the game. However, the game does not officially begin until she enrolls into the magic school when she is 15, where she will meet Fortune Lover's protagonist. Katharina Kleis is determined to change her cursed future and the way she does this is one of the anime's greatest strengths. Katharina Kleis decides that the best way to survive is to try and get on the good side of all the male characters who have their own roots in Fortune Lover. And she also decides to practice farming just in case she gets exiled and needs to take care of herself. Since Katharina Kleis has played Fortune Lover while she was alive as an otaku, she knows all the major characters and how most of the roots end, so she knows who to manipulate for her own benefit. The only problem is Katharina Kleis isn't the smartest lady in the castle, so it's through her own kindness and personality that she changes those around her. I love that the anime takes the first three episodes to show Katharina Kleis develop relationships with all the other main characters when they are children and how she creates strong bonds with them. I usually don't like harem anime because most of the relationships feel forced and unrealistic, but I think by having everyone meet Katharina Kleis as children and grow up with her makes their love for her feel more realistic and believable. Also, these characters are from an Atome game, so it makes sense that they are more prone to romantic feelings. The love the other characters have for Katharina Kleis is believable since Katharina Kleis is a wonderful protagonist. Since her body is now inhabited by a 17-year-old otaku, she doesn't act like a proper lady at all. She climbs trees, makes her own garden, throws toy snakes at other nobles, and gets yelled at by her mother. She also loves romance novels and eats way too many snacks. She is a very likable character who is always trying to help others and her rejection of the nobility makes her stand out from the other characters. I wouldn't call her a very complex character, but it's fun to watch her plan out her strategies in order to avoid a bad outcome. She is also a very dense character and it's fun to see her totally misread a romantic interaction. The other characters are pretty one-dimensional. We've got the overprotective brother type, the girl who wants to engage in Yuri activities, the gorgeous but deadly prince, and others. And while these one-dimensional characters would be a negative for most other anime, I feel like it works for this one. Once again, these characters are part of an Atome game, so they feel like they are supposed to follow a certain script. And by having them be more one-dimensional, it helps with the Otome game aesthetic. The anime also takes some time to examine Katharina Kleis' maid and her story, which I thought was really nice. It just shows how Katharina Kleis has really affected not only the main characters of Fortune Lover, but everyone around her as well. The anime definitely has a comfy feeling to it, and it's just a very relaxing watch. There is some drama near the end, but for the most part the anime is mostly comedy. It's not the funniest thing I've watched, but it's definitely wholesome and left me smiling at points. The animation is… okay, it's nothing spectacular, but it gets the job done. My biggest gripe with the animation is when the cast uses magic. It feels very weak, and the sound effects are not impressive at all. The whole magic system in this anime also feels unneeded. I feel besides the last arc, magic was pretty irrelevant. 
Yes, magic is used to explain some of the story beats, but I feel like the anime would have worked just fine without a magic system in place. The magic system is also very basic, so I was left not caring about it. The magic system doesn't add or subtract anything, it's just there. I also feel another missed opportunity was for Katharina Klaes to use her villainess persona more often. Throughout the anime, Katharina Klaes would sometimes intimidate other students with her villainess persona, which made for some good comedic moments. I was hoping they would have dived deeper into this persona and have Katharina Klaes use it more to her advantage. In a genre overflowing with mediocrity, my next life as a villainess, all roots lead to doom, stands out as an enjoyable and refreshing isekai. The use of a female protagonist was a major selling point for me. I'm tired of seeing isekai with male protagonists who get all the girls without putting any effort. If you're looking for something relaxing and an in-between between longer anime series, I recommend this series. I give my next life as a villainess, all roots lead to doom, a cute villainess out of 10. Thanks for watching my first review everyone. Please subscribe for more anime videos and be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Also, join our Discord if you want to talk about anime. Take care everyone.